Well, the Tallinn Manual provides an extremely useful starting point for guidance regarding the manner in which cyber means and methods can be used in armed conflict. Even this very brief overview of some of the concepts and conundrums demonstrates that this is an ever-evolving area of law. In this area of cyber operations in armed conflict, there has been very little initiative by states in the arena of regulation. It has been left to academic and government experts to develop a best practice type guidance, taking into account prevailing principles and concepts. If international law is to maintain its validity, it needs to be responsive to changing needs. It is clear that cyberspace activity is growing exponentially. This is in terms of both capacity to undertake intrusive action, as well as recognised vulnerabilities due to the wide nature of daily life. The existing law applicable in armed conflict which was designed solely on the basis of kinetic action, requires modification to keep pace. States are developing their cyber capacities that could be used in an armed conflict, yet are, yet are unsure where they sit on the policy continuum. Do they want greater defensive regulation? Or is this an area where perceived advantage and offensive capability means that they want to dispense with any kind of new regulatory oversight, at least through the means of a new treaty applicable to cyber in armed conflict? Hence, as we move forward, we are left with the old principles derived from existing law, and as states begin to understand their cyber capacities and limits, manuals such as the Tallinn Manual provide a useful starting point to assess the lawfulness and legitimacy of actions. It is states, though, that make international law, and as cyber capacities are tested and defences assessed, they will inevitably develop state practice that will be the primary means through which law will continue to develop in this area. It will happen in fits and starts and will not be uniform, but as with all new technologies, cyber means and methods of warfare will be understood for their unique characteristics and there will inevitably be a more informed debate about how humanitarian protections are to be better designed in law to account for the cyber warfare phenomenon. Courses such as this are intended to inform such debate.